Hi, I'm Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. And I'm Kathy Bartoli from IntimacyDojo.com. Yeah. And we're, today we're going to talk about reframing fighting. It's really powerful because in our society, we do have a tendency Whatever. to have discussions that are like, one of us has to win, and I'm going to beat him up until he gives in, or he's going to yeah. give me the cold shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's about one of us winning, one of us being on top and being I'm right. right, you're wrong. <laughs> And that's not a really great way to build intimacy and connection. No. So <laughs> it's kind of a horrible way. Yeah. It's kind of the anti way of building connection. Yes. So in uh, Reed's just released relationship10x.com, a, a new online program, mm -hmm. and in it and, and a live event, which I'm very excited about, um, in the videos he released, the free videos for to help people learn about it, he gives a lot of really powerful information about how to upgrade relationships. And one of the things he talks about is reframing fighting. Yeah. Could you explain? So, yeah, one of the, the, the easiest thing to understand is that for some people, fighting is a way for them to get close again. Mm -hmm. Like they push each other away so that they can prove that they still love each other. And then, and then for some people, it's all about the makeup sex, right? With the big struggle and the crying and you burn yeah. off some stuff that you don't yeah. know how to do otherwise. You release all this pressure and then you come back together and you, you rebond. Yes. Um, and it doesn't have to be that way. Like reframing fighting from you know the under underpinnings of what is the cycle that you guys are getting caught in? Did you inherit that that bad habit, mm -hmm. that communication bad habit from your parents or from your partner's parents? Mm -hmm. Like where did you pick that up? Um, and getting clear about why it is what you're trying to communicate. And what's the actual intention? Mm -hmm. So you can reframe fighting to basically, uh, you know, discussions or arguments, productive arguments, mm -hmm. where you guys are voicing with passion mm -hmm. um, what your needs are. Mm -hmm. Like that's one way to start reframing it. Because um, fighting usually n only ends with a loser. A win yes. There's a winner and a loser. So it's not... Um, it's not what some people would call an infinite game, mm -hmm. where the infinite game is to stay to stay connected and get to know each other better, and also get to figure out what people need. Because ultimately, when we're fighting, there's something that I'm trying to communicate that I'm probably not feeling listened or seen or heard by you on. And then a lot of people, the only way, and this is another bad habit that we've picked up, the only way I know how to try to get my needs met when I feel unheard is to raise my voice. And whenever you find you're in an argument with somebody and they keep repeating themselves, it's usually because they don't feel heard. So take exactly what they just, what they're repeating, if you can, like if you're not so triggered that you're, you're repeating yourself. <laughs> um, and, and hone in on exa exactly what they're saying and just try to recreate it. Like, I hear you keep repeating this piece. So this is what I'm hearing you say. What, what's your need around it? Like, what's underneath it? And you being present with people and trying to leave them feeling seen and heard will start to change the conversation. Because mm -hmm. when I feel heard, I will move on to the next point I need to talk about. Yes. So you actually, by being present, and leaving people f feeling seen and heard, you change what comes out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. They don't repeat, they move on to the next piece and they start getting present with you. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is you get triggered, the fight starts, I get triggered that we're fighting and now that we're both fighting, n neither one of us can, can you know, leave the other one feeling seen or heard. Right, and in addition to repeating and helping your partner feel seen and heard, if you find yourself saying things like you always, you never, there's some, usually some kind of cycle in there, a blame cycle, and it's very common. Humans do this all the time. But if you start saying you're doing, you're not doing, what is the actual need under that? And if you can share that, it's a lot easier for the other person to hear rather than the blame being dumped on them. Mm -hmm. So if you can say, you know, you never take out the trash and you never, like, it's really easy to get in that that mindset where that's modeled for us all the time yeah. on TV and around us. If you can say, hmm, what do I really need? Oh, I need to feel supported. I need to feel like my, you know, the, 
the house that we're living in together is important to you too and I need to like if you can share that the the person may still not want to take out the trash it may not be a yes for them maybe you have to negotiate something there but there may be other ways for them to leave you feeling supported and the fight's usually actually not about the trash yeah and it's a symptom of something underneath that's not being communicated for some of you you know nonviolent communication is a really great framework to start learning how to you know start communicating what your needs are so you can google NVC or nonviolent communication. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who are already starting to use your I statements, like I feel this rather than you did this to me, um, beware that some of us get very clever <laughs> and we blame in I statements. I feel like you're an ass. That's funny. I feel like you're being an <laughs> ass too. Um, so, you know, some of these tools are amazingly powerful um, and you, they take a little bit of practice. Um, so don't start trying to integrate these tools and then blaming the other person for being like, how dare you not use your I statements? <laughs> like, it's a, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, like with, with R10X, um, the online course, like you, you take things in little baby steps. Okay, but it's possible to reframe fighting, kind of jujitsu it, into we're arguing mm-hmm. um, constructively, and then once you get the hang of it, it's kind of fun to fight. Yeah. Uh, one other tip I'll drop in: um, you can make fighting more fun um, by making it sillier. Yeah. So there's a couple friends of a friend who made the agreement that if they were going to fight, they were allowed they were allowed to be blamey. Um, as long as they did it in opera singing. Um, and so this couple was hilarious because they would be like, I think you're a fucking asshole right now. And it was hard for them to take the fighting seriously. <laughs> and it started interrupting the bad habit patterns that they had and reframing that they could be silly and not taking the argument so so personally or so um, you know upping the stakes so high. Yeah. This is a complex learning how to discuss and learning how to fight in a, in a fun, productive way, or even a non-fun, productive way. It can be challenging. Getting some help, um, being in a support group, reading a good book together, or doing something like Reed's Relationship 10X program, where someone walks you through and reinforces it. Our brain doesn't necessarily get something the first time we hear it, and we can kind of struggle and spin our wheels. Whereas if we have someone to kind of hold our hands and say, do this now, practice this now, good job, that can really anchor it. And spending a little bit of time now can transform your relationship for your entire life. Cool. Let us know what you think. What are some silly ways you could drop into your relationships to make fighting more fun and productive?